And um, I think the only thing a politician can do with the climate is to do what he does with everything else he touches, and that is make it worse. Well, I, you know, I, you think about what happened with the, the Mayans and, and South American, uh, uh, at least you read about this happening, but that, that they used to uh, sacrifice people to the sun god, and they would sacrifice, I mean, kill people in order to change the climate. Uh, and I don't think it worked 500 uh-huh. years ago. And I don't think it's going to work today. We can we can keep on throwing uh, businesses to the lions, so to speak, uh, can't keep on sacrificing them, but it, it's not going to make any difference because humans, we're puny. I, you know, I, I think we're being arrogant to think that we can make the climate go one way or another. I remember visiting Mount St. Helens, which in the scheme of things is a very small volcano. But I visited Mount St. Helens, and you look at these three-foot diameter trees that were that were knocked over like toothpicks for you know hundreds of square miles, and it, it just boggles the mind to, as to what Mother Nature can do as opposed to what we humans can do. We, we we'd have to send an army of loggers out there for for years, I think, to cut down that many trees that, uh-huh. that disappeared in a matter of you know, were knocked over in a matter of seconds. Uh-huh. Yeah, the power of nature is awesome. Now, associated with, uh, at least in my estimation, associated with this, um, the, the idea that uh, we're going through cycles in the climate and that uh, we may be headed into another ice age. In fact, the last time you were here, I believe you told us it was your view that we are in an ice age. Yes. Uh, but aside from that, uh, or I might say along with that, I think that, uh, you know, no, nothing happens in isolation. And so um, when we see these climate cycles happening, and, and look, folks, nobody's saying climate change isn't happening. Uh, you know, we, if there was no climate change, that means the planet is dead. Yes. So climate change has been going on um, since the day the planet was formed. And it will go on till the, the planet turns to uh, a crispy cinder in space, by whatever means. Absolutely. The, the climate was warmer uh, 800 years ago during what's called the medieval warm period. The climate was warmer 8,000 years ago during what was ta- called the the climatic climatic optimum. Uh, it was warmer when the dinosaurs were here. Uh, there are some scientists. There's one, Dr. Ian Plymer of um, of Australia, who came out with a book last year. And I'll think of the name of his book in a few minutes. But but Dr. Plymer says we've essentially been in an ice age for 37 million years, believe it or not, and that this is just one of our. We're we're right now in an interglacial within that ice age. Uh, and overall, just even for the last two million years, it's been getting colder. Uh, and so there's every reason to believe that it's going to happen again. And, of course, I think it, it corresponds with magnetic reversals. And well, I that, that's where I was headed. That that goes along well, with all of this. You were going, so go ahead and go there. <laughs> well, I just I, it seems to me that uh, that may, in fact be what's driving a lot of the climate is is what's going on with the magnetic field yes well in 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 my first book and not by fire but by ice that was one of my one of my big points that it was driven by magnetic reversals there was now some scientists uh, will tell you and there may be some university students out there who've heard this uh, they will tell you that the last magnetic reversal was 780,000 years ago at the Brunhess uh, Matayama, Matayama magnetic reversal. But one of the things that they're ignoring is is magnetic excursions. Now, first, for somebody who doesn't even know what a magnetic reversal is, that that's a time in the past when compasses would have pointed toward Antarctica instead of toward the Arctic. And believe it or not, 
magnet the earth's magnetic field scientists believe the earth's magnetic field has been reversed for half of the history well one of the things i found in all of my studies is that there there was a magnetic reversal called the gothenburg magnetic reversal about 11,500 years ago which just happened to be when we had the uh, a smaller ice age, if you want to call it that, when 40% of the large mammals went extinct. That's when the mammoth went extinct, the mastodon, the saber-toothed cat, the, the short-faced bear. So many animals went extinct 11,500 years ago at that magnetic reversal. There was, an, and some people would label it a magnetic excursion. It's a time when the magnetic North Pole moved south. Sometimes it moved south and just stayed there for like 500 years and moved back north. So it's fi- it's hard to find in the record. Sometimes and sometimes when it was doing that, it would it would uh, fluctuate, uh, going up and down and up and down, which I think would mean that there would also be a fluctuation in electric currents going through the Earth. But that was 11,500 years ago. There was a, a magnetic reversal 23,000 years ago called the uh, the uh, Mono Lake magnetic reversal, and that's when uh, we we descended into a very catastrophic ice age, and many animals went extinct. We had a magnetic reversal 33,500 years ago. That was the Lake Mungo magnetic reversal, and just by coincidence, that's when the Neanderthals went extinct by by many accounts, and we went into a short ice age. I mean, it just I keep on seeing them going hand in hand, these magnetic reversals with ice ages and with extinctions, and, and here's the part with my new book, and with the arrival of brand new species on our planet. All right, uh, we're only a few seconds away from uh, break, and I, I want to get into this uh, magnetic reversal and what happens and then also the uh, extinctions and the uh, arising of new species on the planet as a result of that. I want to do that when we come back from break, and we will. So, folks, don't go away. We'll be back right after this. back we're talking this evening with robert felix he is the author of a couple of really interesting books and um uh, one of those books is not by fire but by ice and the other one is magnetic reversals the what is it uh, robert uh, the the magnetic reversals and evolutionary leaps and all and all part of the same title and ev- evolutionary leaps Yes. Um, a review of magnetic reversals and evolutionary leaps has been written and published in the Mensa Review. Uh, now, folks, you know, uh, the Mensa people are smart people. And uh, it was a very positive review. And, in fact, they said, you know, uh, at last someone proposes uh, a solution that makes sense here. And uh, the solution that they're talking about, the problem to which a solution needed to be proposed, is what you've heard me talk about here on the show, and that is uh, the missing link problem in Darwin's theory, uh, which even Darwin admitted was a huge problem. The fossil record was a huge problem for his theory. And um, basically, uh, as I understand it, your book proposes... Uh, the reason we can't find missing links in the um, fossil record is because there aren't any. Absolutely, and, I, and, and I'm not alone on this. Now, one, I do have to admit, when I started out with this, I didn't realize how acrimonious the debate over 
over evolution could become. Uh, it, it's the creeps versus the jerks. The, the 